According to Livius.org, Herod Antipas, a nickname derived from Antipatros, was the son of the Jewish king Herod the Great and his wife Malphase. He was full brother to Archelaus and half brother to Philip. With his brothers Archelaus and Philip, he was educated in Rome, a kind of honourable detention to guarantee his father's loyalty. In his father's testament, Herod Antipas was appointed Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea, the east bank of the Jordan. The Roman Emperor Augustus confirmed this decision and Antipas's reign could begin 4 BCE. In 17 CE, he founded a new capital which he called Tiberius to honour the Roman Emperor Tiberius. Unfortunately, it was discovered that he was building this city on top of an old Jewish graveyard. This caused great unrest among his subjects. For a long time, no pious Jew would enter Tiberius, which was populated by Greeks and Romans. However, Antipas was a Jewish leader or liked to pose as a Jewish leader. For example, he is known to have celebrated Passover and Sukkot in Jerusalem. Unfortunately, his subjects were not convinced by their leader's piety. Jesus of Nazareth compared him to a fox, an animal that was ritually unclean. He was first married to Phasaelus, a daughter of Aretas IV, an Arab leader. Later, he divorced her in order to marry Herodias. She had been the wife of Herod Antipas, half-brother, who was also called Herod. Marriage to the ex-wife of one's brother was not uncommon, but Herodias was also the daughter of another half-brother, Aristobulus. Marriage to one's niece was also permitted, but marriage to a woman who was both one's sister-in-law and one's niece was unusual. According to the Gospel of Mark, John the Baptist criticized the king and was consequently killed. Flavius Josephus writes that Herod Antipas subjects were convinced that the war with Aratus that broke out in 36 and the Arab success during this war were a divine punishment. The author of the Gospel, however, offers a different explanation. Antipas's daughter Salome had been dancing in public, much to the delight of her father who asked her to ask a present and was shocked to learn that she demanded the head of the Baptist. And that was depicted in scripture in Matthew 14, verse 1. At the time of Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servant, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her, and although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, because of the oath and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it, and went and told Jesus. In 37, Herodias' brother Agrippa became king of the realms of Philip. She thought that the royal title ought to be given to her husband and made a plan to make Herod Antipas king. The emperor did not agree and exiled the Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea to Lyon in Gaul. The city of Lyon, Lagdunum, early history in the area of what is now called Lyon, two Celtic settlements probably inhabited by a tribe of Segusiavi, I cannot pronounce that very well, have been identified which date back to the Latene period after 450 BCE. The first of these was an opidum on the west bank of the Seine on a hill called Fauvier. The other town was located between the Seine and the Rhone. This second town may have been called Lagdanion, Hill of Lagus, attested on a coin from 42 BCE from which Latin Lagdanium was derived. Situated near the confluence of two important rivers, one connecting the area with the Mosele and Rhine, the other leading in general direction of the upper Danube. 
we can imagine early Lyon as a trade center. This is confirmed by the presence of Italian amphoras and Greek pottery. Roman conquest. The Romans conquered the valley of Rhone from south, first subjecting the Allobroges in C 120 BCE, having gained control of the area. The Romans founded the city of Vienna. An Allobrogian leader named Catugnatus, please excuse my pronunciation of any of these words, revolted and expelled the Roman merchants. The later went up north and took over Lugdunum. In this confused situation, the Helvetii announced that they would migrate downstream along the Rhone and proceed to Aquitania, which was sufficient for the Roman general Julius Caesar to intervene. In 58, he captured the hill of Fauvier, which was to remain one of his bases during the subsequent war in Gaul. The city was formally organized as a colonia after the death of Caesar by Lucius Manatus Plancus, the first inhabitants must have been veterans from Caesar's legions. In the 30s of the 1st century BCE, the Romans organized the three Gauls conquered by Caesar, converting them into three provinces and creating a network of roads. General Agrippa, the right-hand man of Caesar's heir Octavian, built important roads, one from Lyon to Bordeaux, in the west and one from Lyon to Geneva and Augst in the northeast and one from Lyon to the north. In 12 BCE, the Romans dedicated an altar to Roma and Augustus in the Crux Rusae Hill. Every year, Gallic leaders would gather here to discuss affairs. Conquest was over. Lyon had become the capital of the three Gauls. Late Antiquity after the mid 3rd century, the Rhine border was threatened and the seat of the Roman government was transferred to the northeast where Cologne, Mainz and Trier became increasingly important. For Lyon, this was the beginning of a slow decline. There were no funds to restore the aqueduct, so important for a large city. When it had fallen into disrepair, still the city was frequently visited by emperors. For example, Constantine the Great and usurper Magnentus, who committed suicide in Lyon. Lyon remained an important Christian centre, though, with an episcopal palace on the banks of Seine, a baptistry and a church that was dedicated to John the Baptist, the present cathedral. On the ancient cemeteries outside the walls, several funerary basilicas were constructed. In 460, Lyon became the residence of the Burgundians who were eventually conquered by the Franks in 532. Uh, what's really ironic is that Herod Antipas was banished to Lyon by the Caesar and the church is dedicated to John the Baptist. So if we have a look at the Burgundians, uh, the Burgundians were an early Germanic tribe or group of tribes. They appeared in the Middle Rhine region near the Roman Empire and were later moved to into the Empire of the Western Alps and Eastern Gaul. They were possibly mentioned much earlier in the time of the Roman Empire as living in part of the region of Germania that is now part of Poland. According to the Jewish Virtual Library and according to medieval Jewish legend, one of the three boats loaded with Jewish captives taken during the siege of Jerusalem docked at Lyon. Herod Antipas, Tetrarch of Galilee, was exiled to the city by Caligula in 39 CE. Lyon seemed to have had a Jewish population in both the 1st and the 2nd centuries. Little more is known about the Jews of Lyon until the beginning of the 9th century. However, when there was a large, prosperous and powerful Jewish community in the city, the Jews owned slaves and also employed Christian labourers in their homes and in their commercial and agricultural enterprises. So, it's interesting that um, if Herod Antipas was exiled to Lyon in 39 CE, um, surely he didn't die and his wife Herodias was also exiled with him. So. I'm interested to know how old they were in the year 39 CE. According to Wikipedia, he was born in the year, born before 20 BC and died after 39 AD. So there's no distinct time of his death. So if he was born before 20 BC, that would have made him around the age of 59, 60 years old when he was exiled. 
But how old was Herodias? So Herodias was born 15 BCE and after 39 CE she died. So it seems to be they lost trace of these both Herod Antipas and Herodias when they were exiled to Lyon in 39 AD or CE, whatever you'd like to use. So she would have been around the age of 54. His marriage to Herodias early in his reign, Antipas had married the daughter of King Aretas IV of Nabatea. However, on a visit to Rome, he stayed with his half-brother Herod II, and there he fell in love with his wife Herodias, granddaughter of Herod the Great and Mariamne. And as I said again, these Herods were very fond of incest and marrying nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters. That being said, most of the aristocratic families of these ancient empires did marry within the family, ancient and modern. Two agreed to marry after Herod Antipas had divorced his wife. Aretas daughter learned of the plan and asked permission to travel to the frontier fortress of Macarius, whence Nabataean forces escorted her to her father. With his daughter safe and in custody, Aretas now could declare a war on Herod. It is generally agreed that the war in which Herod was defeated occurred in 36 AD, a year before the death of Emperor Tiberius. A point of contention today is how long before this date Herod's marriage to Herodias took place. Some surmise that the marriage of Antipas and Herodias took place shortly before the war in about 34 AD, after the death of Philip but others have pointed to Josephus Antiqu Antiquities of the Jews, Book 18, Chapter 5, Paragraph 4, comment that Herodias divorced herself from her husband while he was alive. To argue that it took place before Herod II's death, about 27 AD, thus making it possible for Jesus to have been born in the reign of Herod the Great, as indicated by the Gospel of Matthew, and to have died in his early 30s as indicated by the Gospel of Luke. Antipas faced more immediate problems in his own tetrarchy after John the Baptist in 28 to 29 AD, according to the Gospel of Luke, or 27 AD if the co-regency Augustus and Tiberius is included in Luke's reckoning of time, for which there is some evidence, began a ministry of preaching and baptism by the River Jordan, which marked the western edge of Antipas's territory of Perea. The Gospels state that John attacked the Tetrarch's marriage as, contrary to Jewish law, it was incestuous as Herodias was also Antipas's niece, but also John criticised the fact that she was his brother's wife, lending credence to the belief that Antipas and Herodias married while Herod II was still alive. Well, Josephus says that John's public influence made Antipas fearful of rebellion, John was imprisoned at Macarius. According to Matthew and Mark, Herod was reluctant to order John's death, but was compelled by Herodias' daughter, unnamed in the text, but named by Josephus as Salome, to whom he had promised any reward up to half his kingdom. She chose a result of her dancing for guests at his birthday banquet. Exile and death, Antipas' fall from power was due to Caligula and his own nephew Agrippa, brother of Herodias. When Agrippa fell into debt during the reign of Tiberius, despite his connections with the imperial family, Herodias persuaded Antipas to provide for him, but the two men quarrelled and Agrippa departed. After Agrippa was heard expressing to his friend Caligula his eagerness for Tiberius to die and leave room for Caligula to succeed him, he was imprisoned. When Caligula finally became emperor in 37 AD, he not only released his friend, but granted him rule of Philip's former tetrarchy slightly extended with the title of king. Josephus relates that Herodias' jealousy at Agrippa's success persuaded Antipas to ask Caligula for the title of king for himself. However, Agrippa simultaneously presented the emperor with a list of charges against the tetrarch. Allegedly, he had conspired against Tiberius with Sejanus, executed in 31 AD, and was now plotting against Caligula with Artabanus. As evidence, Agrippa noted that Antipas had a stockpile of weapons sufficient for 70,000 men. Hearing Antipas' admission to this last charge, Caligula decided to believe the allegation of conspiracy. In the summer of 39 AD, 
Antipas's money and territory were turned over to Agrippa, while Antipas was exiled. Lugdunum, identified with Lugdunum Convernum, now St. Bertrand de Cummings, was the place of exile. As recorded by Josephus in Antiquities, Caligula offered to allow Herodias as Agrippa's sister to retain her property. However, she chose instead to join her husband in exile. Antipas died in exile. The third century historian Cassius Dio seemed to imply that Caligula had him killed. But this is usually treated with skepticism by modern historians. Antipas was educated in Rome with older brother Archelaus. As the age difference between the two was not great, both were sent to Rome together to complete their education. Antipas was designated crown prince in place of Antipater, Herod's eldest son. Herod, however, changed his will shortly before his death and left to Antipas only Galilee and the Jewish portion of Transjordan. According to the final version of the will, Antipas was to have been subject to the authority of Archelaus, who received the kingship and dominion over all parts of the kingdom. To Herod's death, however, Antipas appealed to Augustus against the legality of this will and claimed the throne. Augustus confirmed Antipas as ruler over Galilee and Judean Transjordan and also confirmed the title Tetrarch, which had been given to him by Herod Antipas. Herod Antipas rebuilt and fortified Sepphoris, which had been burnt in the war of Varus in 4 BCE, and made it his chief capital. In Transjordan, he rebuilt Batharantha, biblical Beth Haram, Batharantha in the Talmud, which had also suffered seriously in the war, and named it Livius after Augustus' death in 14 CE. He renamed it Julius in honor of the deceased emperor's wife Julia, who took the name as her husband had ordained in his will. He named his new capital on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee Tiberius in honor of the emperor Tiberius. The city was splendidly built and the Tetrarch paid no attention to the protests of his Jewish subjects, who regarded it as a palace of defilement since it was built on the site of a cemetery. Tiberius was organized as Hellenistic city with, the city, with a city council. The extract date of the founding of Tiberius is unknown, although probably it was shortly after Tiberius' appointment as emperor in 14 CE. With a view of carrying favour with him, Josephus states explicitly that there were close relations between Herod Antipas and Tiberius, which he maintained until his death. The forbidden marriage of Antipas and Herodias, the wife of his brother Herod, the son of Mariamne, the high priest's daughter, stirred the resentment of the people against him. The forbidden marriage of Antipas to Herodias, the wife of his brother Herod, the son of Mariamne, the high priest's daughter, stirred the resentment of the people against him. When John the Baptist dared to denounce the marriage publicly, he was executed in Macarius at the command of Antipas, according to Josephus. However, the principal reason for the execution was Antipas's fear of political disturbances in the wake of John's appearance. His marriage to Herodias also led to war with Arates, the fourth king of the Nabataeans in 36 CE. Antipas had previously married a daughter of Aretas, I cannot pronounce that, who fled to her father when she heard of impending marriage between her husband and Herodias. In this war, Antipas was defeated and when Tiberius heard the news, he ordered Vitalius, governor of Syria, to go to Antipas' aid. In the spring of 37 CE, Vitalius set out with his army to fight the Nabataeans at Petra. At the request of the Jews, he avoided passing through Judea. After the dismissal of the procurator Pontius Pilate, he and Antipas set out alone for Jerusalem to ascertain the state of events there. Tiberius died four days later, and Vitalius interrupted his preparations for war against the Nabataeans. Antipas had been the mediator between Rome and the Parthians. When the peace treaty between Rome and Artaban III, king of Parthia, was signed, Antipas informed Caesar before Vitalius and thus aroused the wrath of the later. With the ascension of Caligula, the influence of Agrippa, Antipas's enemy in Rome, increased. Agrippa accused Antipas before the emperor of preparing for war against Rome with Parthian assistance. Antipas came to Rome 
and tried in vain to prove to Caesar that this information was incorrect. He was exiled to Lugdunum and his property was confiscated. His domain was attached to Agrippa's kingdom. So Herod Antipas was educated in Rome with his half-brother Archelaus. Um, and according to the Jewish, Jewish Encyclopedia, son of Herod I, king of Judea, born in 21 BC, his mother being the Samaritan Malthais, at the age of 14 he was sent to Rome for education and after a stay or two or three years returned home with his brother Antipas and Philip who likewise had attended the school of the imperial city. His return was possibly hastened by the intrigues of Antipater who by means of forced letters and similar devices culminated him to his father in hope of ensuring for him the same sanguinary fate he had prepared for his brother Aristobulus and Alexander. As a result of these slanders, Herod designated Antipas, the youngest son, as his successor, changing his will to that effect. On his deathbed, however, four days before his demise, the king relinquished his determination and appointed Archelaus to the throne, while Antipas and Philip were made tetrarchs merely. Nothing is known definitely of the occasion for this change, though there may be some foundation for the statement of Archelaus' opponents that the dying king, in his enfeebled condition, had yielded to some palace intrigue in the latter's favour. Archelaus thus attained the crown with little difficulty at the early age of 18. That age, plotter Salome found it convenient to abet Archelaus and secured for him the adherence of the army. Hence, there was no opposition when he figured as the new ruler at the intimate of Herod. The people, glad of the death of the tyrant, were well disposed towards Archelaus, and in the public assembly in the temple, the new king promised to have regard to the wishes of his subjects. It very soon became manifest, however, how little he intended to keep his word. Popular sentiment, moulded by the Pharisees, demanded the removal of the Sadducees High priest Josa of the Bothius family and the punishment of those former councils of Herod who had brought about the martyrdom of the Pharisees Mattathasis and Judas. Archelaus, professing always profound respect for the popular demand, pointed out that he could not well take any such extreme measures before he had been confirmed by the Roman Emperor. Augustus in his sovereignty. Just as soon as the confirmation should be received, he declared himself willing to grant the people's desire. His subjects, however, seemed not to have had confidence in his assurance, and when on the day before Passover, a day when all Palestine, so to speak, was in Jerusalem, they became so insistent in their demand for intermediate action that the king felt himself compelled to send a detachment of the Herodian soldiery against them into the temple courts and when the detachment proved unable to master the enraged populace he ordered out the whole available garrison in the massacre that ensured 3,000 were left dead on the temple pavement division of the kingdom by Rome as soon as the tumult had been somewhat allayed Archelaus hastened to Rome to secure the required confirmation of his succession from Augustus he found that he had to encounter opposition from the two sides. His brother Antipas, supported by many members of the Herodian house residents in Rome, claimed formal acknowledgement for Herod's second will. That nominated him king. Besides the Jews of Palestine, sent a depopulation of 50 persons who were supported by about 8,000 Jewish residents of Rome and petitions for the exclusion of the Herodians from any share whatever in the government of the land and for the incorporation of Judea in the province of Syria. Such was the disloyalty among the Herodians that many members of the family secretly favoured this later popular demand. But Augustus, with statesmanlike insight, concluded that it was better for Rome's interest to make Judea a monarchy governed by its own king's tributary to Rome than to leave it a Roman province administered by Romans, in which later case there would certainly be repeated insurrections against the foreign administration. 
as it would be more prudent to make such a monarchy as small and powerless as possible, he decided to divide Herod's somewhat extensive empire into three portions. Archelaus was accordingly appointed ethnarch, not king of Judea, Samaria and Idumea, with the exception of the important cities of Gaza, Gadara and Hippus, which later joined to the province of Syria. Antipas and Philip were made tetrarchs of the remaining province, the former receiving Galilee and Perea, and later the other lands east of the Jordan. Archelaus returned to Jerusalem shortly after Varus suppressed the insurrection. Very little is known of the further events of his reign, which lasted 10 years. But so much is clear that instead of seeking to heal the wounds brought upon the country by himself and his house, he did much to accelerate the ultimate overthrow of Judean independence. In the years 6 of the Common Era, a deputation of the Jewish and Samaritan aristocracy waited upon Augustus in Rome to prefer charges against Archelaus, with the result that he was immediately summoned to Rome, divided of his crown and banished to Gaul. Okay, so he's been banished to Vienna as well where according to Dion Cassius Cocinaeus history Roma he lived for the remainder of his days so we have two Herods who've been banished to Gaul Archelaus was a veritable Herodian but without the statement like ability of his father he was cruel and tyrannical sensual and extreme a hypocrite and a plotter he observed the customary seven days of mourning for his father but in the midst of them gave to his boon companions a congratulatory banquet upon his accession. He carefully avoided placing his image upon a coinage in deference to Pharisaic susceptibilities, but he nevertheless allowed his passion for his widowed sister-in-law, Glaphira, to master him and married her in defiance of the sentiment of the people and the Pharisees who regarded the union as incestuous. He deposed the high priest Joza on his return from Rome, not in obedience to popular complaint, but for a money consideration. Joza's brother was his successor, although the later was exactly the same type. Indeed, Archelaus, in his short reign, deposed three high priests for purpose of profit. Against his serious list of evils, there is hardly anything good to set in contrast, beyond perhaps the fact that he inherited from his father a certain love of splendor and a taste for building. He restored the royal palace at Jericho in magnificent style, surrounded it with groves of palms, and also founded a city that he called his own Honor Archelaus. And it's interesting to mention there is a group of Herods in Rome that are prominent and can hold sway over the Caesar's opinion. And if we look into the education of these Herods, we'll find that they have been educated along with some of the Caesars and even stayed with their families while they were being educated as young men. So here we see Herod the Great grew up in Rome where he was given the full Roman education and formed friendships with the children of the Caesar, establishing great connections that would serve him later. So again, Herod Archelaus, at the age of 14, he was sent to Rome for education and after a stay of two or three years returned home with his brother Antipas and Philip, who likewise had attended the schools of the imperial city. So regarding Archelaus, first son of Herod and Malthais, designed as a chief heir to the Herodian monarchy, though not yet 20, the oldest of Herod's surviving sons was ill-prepared to succeed his father in a time of political unrest. While he imitated Herod's ruthless brutality, he possessed none of the latest diplomatic skills. Archelaus had been raised in Rome by a certain Jew, Josephus Antiqu Antiquities 1720. So who was that certain Jew? Unlike Hasmonean half-brothers who were given a Roman education in the imperial palace, he did not share in Antipater III's brief rise to power. And even Antipater was imprisoned in 5 BC, Herod initially chose his youngest son, Antipas, that rather than his eldest Archelaus, to succeed him as king. But Herod altered his will just before he died, 
to name Archelaus as heir to his office and half of his estate. So here we see that again the sons of Herod, the half Hasmonean brothers, were educated in the imperial palace of Rome um, along with the other Roman aristocracy and the families and children of the Caesars. Okay, uh, finally we have Philip the Tetrarch and Philip the Tetrarch, sometimes called Philip Herod Philip II by modern writers, son of Herod the Great and his fifth wife Cleopatra of Jerusalem, ruled over the northeast part of his father's kingdom from 4 BCE until his death in 34 CE. Philip II was born 26 BCE. He was a half-brother of Herod Antipas and Herod Archelaus and should not be confused with Herod II whom some writers call Herod Philip I. Philip inherited the northeast part of his father's kingdom which included Ituria and Trachonitis and possibly Gaulantis and Panias, as was noted by Flavius Josephus. Augustus made his own division of Herod's kingdom giving one half to Archelaus while dividing the other half into two going to Antipas and Philip. Batanaea along with Trachonitis and Eronitis with a certain part of what was called the House of Zenodorus paid the annual tribute of 100 talents to Philip. Philip married his niece Salome, the daughter of Herodias and Herod II and also a member of the Herodian dynasty. This Salome appears in the Bible in connection with the beheading of John the Baptist. However, there would have been a great difference in their age. Salome was born in 14 CE, at which time Her Herod Philip was 39 years old. The Gospel of Matthew and Mark state that the Herodias whom Herod Antipas married was the wife of Antipas' brother Philip, a fact supported by Josephus, who indicates she was the wife of Herod II, Acca Philip. It is known that Philip the Tetrarch rebuilt the city of Caesarea Philippi, calling it his own name to distinguish it from Caesarea on the sea coast, which was the seat of the Roman government. It is possible that the Salome he was married to was the half-sister by the same name, a daughter of Herod the Great and his eighth wife, Alpus. The sibling, Salome, was born in 14 BCE and so only five years younger than Herod Philip, a more realistic age gap. But this would also be the only known occurrence of the children of Herod the Great intermarrying, even if from different mothers. Marriage to first cousins and uncles, however, was relatively common in the so-called Herodian dynasty. There is no contemporary evidence for Philip the Tetrarch's use of the name Herod Philip as a dynastic title as did occur with the, his brother Herod Antipas and Herod Archelaus. Herod II is sometimes called Philip Herod Philip I because the Gospels call the husband of Herodias Philip and then Philip the Tetrarch is called Herod Philip II. Kokinos says the stubborn insistence of many theologians in referring to Herod II as Herod Philip is without any value. No illusory Herod Philip ever existed. Philip the Tetrarch, unlike his brother, did not use Herod as a dynastic name. Philip's half-brother Archelaus and Antipas had adopted the name of Herod, presumably for a dynastic claim from Herod the Great. When the Roman Emperor Augustus adjusted Herod's will, Philip was assigned to the region east of the Sea of Galilee in the modern north Israel, Lebanon and southern Syria. In 6 CE, he may have joined in charging his half-brother with misgoverning Judea, but with little benefit to himself, for Judea then became a Roman province. Of his father's inheritance, his was the poorest share, but he ruled it well. Because he had a few Jewish subjects, he pursued a policy of Hellenization. His coins bore the emperor's image, and he rebuilt a town, Bethsaida, on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee and renamed it Julius in honour of the Empress daughter. Near the 
near the source of the Jordan River, he founded another town and allowed it a large degree of self-governance on the Greek pattern. Philip was less extravagant of Jerusalem and the fact that the king's will made him administrator of Gulant, devoting his time to his subjects late in his years, regions in southwestern Syria and the Lebanese mountains that Augustus had added to Herod's jurisdiction two decades earlier. Like the territory assigned his half-brother Antipas, Philip's domain comprised about a quarter of the area of Herod's kingdom and was the least heavily Judaized. Like Antipas, Philip honoured his Roman patrons by founding cities dedicated to the imperial family, Panaeus, an ancient spa and pagan shrine at the source of the Jordan River became Philip's imperial capital, Caesarea Philippi, while the fishing port of Bethsaida on the north east shore of Lake Genesaret was enlarged and renamed Julius to honour the wife of Augustus, Livia, who styled herself Julia Augusta. He was married to Salome II, who was daughter of his half-brother Herod II by his niece Herodias, but he died without heirs in his domain, was given to Herodias' brother Agrippa I. So it appears that Philip the Tetrarch was a more humble Herod compared to his brothers and reigned in his region without many dramas and he died and his wife Salome then married a cousin and became the queen of Armenia Minor. So there we have it. We have the three Tetrarch sons of Herod the Great. One dying at a reasonably young age and having a rather quiet life. The other two who led a very similar life, both marrying their relatives or brothers, wives, both being exiled to Leon in Gaul, which was then called Lagdunum, living out their life in exile. And I know it can get a little bit boring hearing all the history repeated about these people's lives and trying to figure out what this, what's the point here, but it does have a point and it's important to learn who they were and how they ruled the Holy Land in the time of Jesus because it opens up the picture of Revelation and we understand the lives of the people who were living in that time and what the apostles were talking about and representing to those people. I just want to make a, a point here too that I am reading articles off the internet and mainly Wikipedia which we all know isn't a trusted source. However, many of these articles have been cited to historical books from historians like Josephus and other scholars who have written genealogical and historic books about the Herods. These books I can't afford to buy myself and they are available online but you do have to pay. But these articles have all sourced these same books as their reference so I think the information is pretty solid on the stories and the history of these Herods in regards to the regions they ruled and the events that happened in their lives. So that wraps up the end of this video, um, the little season of Satan and the Herod Tetrarchs and in my next episode I'll be talking about the other Herods and the last two Herod kings to rule before the fall of Jerusalem in 66 to 70 AD, Herod Agrippa I and Herod Agrippa II. So hopefully you enjoyed this and I've got a lot more information to put in these videos that is connected to scripture in Revelation. Thanks.